Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Though we are few, we know that uh, we are surrounded by many. Amen. Amen, church. Can I please invite each and everyone to stand up and let us welcome the word of the Lord. If you have your pen and paper with you, uh, write it. Second uh, Peter chapter 3. Our topic is going to be from verse 3 until verse 11. At, uh, let us read chapter 8, uh, verse 8 and verse 9. Are you ready? Second Peter chapter 3 verses 8 and 9. But do not forget this one but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promises, as some understand slowness. But the Lord is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Our most gracious Lord, all hallelujahs belongs to you and to your name alone. According to your servant, O God, Indeed, hallelujah is a very simple phrase, but it has a profound meaning. But most importantly, O Lord, the word, the term hallelujah is only reserved for you, our master. The Lord hallelujah is only reserved for you, our Jesus, our King, and our Messiah. And we thank you so much that you have gathered us this afternoon, that you have allowed us to worship you with a thousand hallelujahs through our mouth, through our hands, through our feet, through our being, O Lord. And even thank you that you are allowing us to continue to worship you by studying your words, by hearing your words. Lord Jesus, with the power of your Holy Spirit, open our hearts, open our minds, open our senses so that we will be able to receive fully the message that you have prepared for us this afternoon. Lord Jesus, with the power of your Holy Spirit, rebuke whatever works, whatever wiles, and whatever schemes of the enemy to hinder us in fully receiving you this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Before we begin, before we begin the message, I want to um, ask, no, before we begin our message, I want to ask um, uh, all of us, as well as people online. Amen? Uh, gusto kong hilingin sa ating lahat. I want to ask all of us, my dear brothers and sisters, that do not merely see this person standing in front of you. Do not merely listen to the words that will be spoken here. Amen? 
Because this is a caveat. Uunahan ko na kayo. If you are going, if you are going to to hear these words and looking at the person speaking these words, you will be upset. You will be frustrated. Masasaktan ka, my dear brothers and sisters. But the good thing is, these words, it's not my assumption, hindi ko ito kuru-kuru. It's not my words. Amen? It's not my words. As always, we are gonna refer in the word of the Lord. Amen, church? So, at this very early, it is my prayer that the Lord hide this person, hide this man with his precious blood behind him so that it is not this man that will be heard, it is not this man that will be considered, it is not his words that we will be hearing but remind me, this part is called the Word of God. Amen, church. And if you feel, if you feel, if you think, if you hear and say that, oh, that is me, that is about me, you know what, my dear brothers and sisters, you're not wrong. It is not only of you, it is not only you, it's not only because of you, it is not only pertains to you, it also pertains to me. It pertains to all of us. Amen, church. Amen. You're not alone. It is for all of us. And that is the word of the Lord. It is for all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you like the title of our message today is what is the real message of end times? Amen? What is the real message of end times? Or what is the real purpose of end times? What is end times all about? Amen? And again, I just want to read it. 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning from verse 3 until verse 11. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming that he promised? Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forgot that long ago, by God's words, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of the water and by the water. By these waters, also the world, the time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the represent heaven and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. And then that's what we have read earlier. Let's jump to verse 10 to save us time. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by the fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, the question is, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. So clearly, my dear brothers and sisters, we are going to be talking about end times because we are in the end times. Amen, church. Just imagine this afternoon, okay? Just imagine this afternoon if Alwyn or Mike or whoever among them, we are gathered here in this wonderful building of theirs. 
And just imagine if they lock all the doors, okay? They lock all the exit. And guess what? Everything in this room is all the things that we like. Everything in this room is everything that we love. Everything in this room is everything that we enjoy doing. What are they, my dear brothers and sisters? If I am going to ask Chuchu, he probably wants to have his own motorcycle uh, uh, circuit in there. If I'm going to ask Louis, he probably wants to have his own Formula One circuit in there. If I'm going to ask Gab, he probably wants to have his own music studio in there. Amen. How about you? What are you going to be bringing in this place? All shut down. Everything that you want. Everything that you desire. Your family. Your relations. What else? Filipino. We are fond of karaoke. Siguro, you want the karaoke in there with all the thousand songs. Amen. What else that you want to be there? Food. Yeah, we love food. Maybe all the choice food is there. What else do you want to put there? Help me here. Pets and dogs. Uh, cats and dogs. Catalog? Cats and dogs. Uh, cat and dogs. Oh, you will be playing. Uh, you have a cat, they have a dog. You will be playing with them. Yes, amen. What else, my dear brothers and sisters? Amen. Eh, if uh, Brother Alan, Brother Les is here, they probably want to have their own pond in there. Fishing. Amen. Whatever it is that you desire, it's all here. Little did we know. Or even, there is a good, strong Wi-Fi. So you can uh, all browse all the online and all the, the movie that you want in there. And anything else. Amen. Online shopping, everything that, you, that we enjoy doing. But little that we know, that the moment that Alwyn in the gang and everyone shut this building out, they started a fire. They started a fire of this building. And they said, you only have two hours to get out of the building before it will burn down. Are we getting it, my dear brothers and sisters? What if he's got a good relation with Mike? Because they're always uh, coming here beforehand. What is Mike told Brother Ramon? Brother Ramon, without you knowing, without your group knowing, we set a fire on the building and you only have two hours to get out. What will Brother Ramon do? Or if it's you in that situation, what are you going to do? Basic fire training 101. Raise the alarm. Amen, church. Amen. Raise the alarm. Hello? Amen. Or are you sarilinin mo lang? Will you keep it as a secret? No. Raise the alarm. Tell all the people that we need to get out of the building. We only have two hours. Amen, church. Amen. Are you following me? If you are the people, you really love singing, will you continue to sing knowing that you only have two hours? You are in your circuit too. Will you continue in that circuit, Louis, in your circuit, Gab, playing music? Will you continue doing that knowing you only have two hours to escape? Anyone? In your Timu, you have many on your inboxes or in your shopping trolley. Are you going to, to check that out knowing that two hours it's gonna be? Well, it's two hours earlier. It's already less than two hours now. What are we going to do? Fine, check everything. How can we get out of the building? Amen, church. Amen. For the sake of Sister Wilma and for example, nandito tayo sa building na to, and naisarado, and nasusunog, ano po ang uunahin nating gawin? Amen? We have to find a way to go out. Yeah? So my dear brothers and sisters, we are all in agreement that we are living in the end times. 
Amen, church? Amen. And we know that. Amen. That's why we're raising the alarm. Amen, church? We know that, that we are living in the end times. That's why we are raising the alarm. That's why we are telling people, people, wake up. We are in the end times. Does it make sense? Amen, church? Knowing that we are living in the end times, will you still continue living the way you are living if you know that that is contrary to the will of God? That's the idea. Amen. It's good. With the fire, we know that we have two hours. How about the coming of the Lord? Do we know that we, we have two hours? Who can raise his hands in the air? Well, our hope is we can get to finish this message so that we can hear the message of the Lord. But who among you in here knows with assurance that we have two hours? Oh, Teresa, you know that we have two hours? Why is that? Let's say the, the, the rapture can happen anytime. Yeah, the rapture can happen anytime. Okay? So the rapture can happen anytime. Amen? The rapture can happen anytime. Even as we speak. Even as we speak, people will go to the toilet. They are, they are not coming back. <laughs> Without us realizing that. <laughs> Amen? My dear brothers and sisters, we are all in agreement that we are in the end times. Amen. And the question here is, talking about this building, are you still going to continue those things that you love doing? Are you going to still continue to those things that you think you enjoy doing when you know that you have less than two hours to go out? And you don't even know how to go out? Same thing, my dear brothers and sisters. We are in the end times and the answer is, how are we preparing what are we doing? Many people in Sweden or even in Israel, they are buying a space in the bunkers. Yeah? Many people who can afford, well, in Israel, all the, 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 the houses, even before, people who have money, when they build a house, it's a standard that they have a bunker. How are you preparing? Stock filing food, stock filing your uh, favorite baked in beans and tin can of food. What are we doing to prepare, my dear brothers and sisters? Or maybe I will step back with my answer, I with my question. Are we all in agreement that we are in the end times? Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Or is there anyone in here who is not convinced? that we are in the end times. Or furthermore, is there anyone in here who does not believe in end times? Meron po ba dito mga kapatid na hindi sila naniniwala to, for the end times? Is there anyone in here who does not believe in the end times, my dear brothers and sisters? These are not the words. These are not just mere words of the preachers. The Bible tells us if you don't want to listen to the preacher, you read your Bible and in your Bible, my dear brothers and sisters, if we trust the Bible as the word of the Lord, the word the Lord said in His words, it talks a lot about end times. So therefore, end times is true. Amen, church. And it talks about that in the end times, there will be much tribulation. There will be much suffering. Amen. A lot of bad things is going to happen. Third world war, that is one of it. Sister Mary Ann said, famine, anarchy, name it. Amen. Amen. Even Luke or even the gospel said that when that day comes, 
It is so severe that it was never experienced before. Amen. It says even on the passage in Luke 11 that we were reading last time, that it says that it was more bearable and tolerable in Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, you can put your mind what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah where brimstone and fire fall down from heaven. It burned the city. It turned Lot's wife into a pillar of salt. And to those people before, it was intolerable. But the word of the Lord said, there will be a, a time, this end times, that the tribulation time, that it is so severe, that it is even more severe than what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen, church. What? Read Matthew chapter 24. And again, write it. Write it or un put it in your mind. I pray, I encourage you that when you go home later on, open in Matthew 24 and study the word again. Study the word of the Lord again. Study Matthew 24 again. But most importantly, do not forget to read Matthew 25. Because Matthew 25 talks to us about preparation. Amen. I encourage you to do that. Go home later. Find time to study Matthew 24 and Matthew 25. Amen, church. It says in there in Revelation that after all this devastation, after all this tribulation, it says in there that Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will physically land on this earth. Amen. Jesus Christ will physically return on this earth. You know, all when this tribulation comes, it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, that none of this word we know will exist. They will all put into rubble. Eiffel Tower. What else? London Eye. What else? Luneta Park, Rizal Park in the Philippines. Statue of Liberty. None will be left. They will all be brought into rubble. They will all be destroyed. Amen, church. And once Jesus will return, there is going to be a final judgment of everyone who did not believe in the Lord. Amen? And God will create a new heaven and a new earth, my dear brothers and sisters, and everyone, and that is where we will be sent to our final eternal address whether you will live in hell or you will live in heaven. Amen, church. But the message of end times is, it's not what exactly what happened in the end times. This is where many people fail because they were looking for the signs. Amen. The signs are given for you to prepare. Amen, church? But what people are doing, my dear brothers and sisters, the Christians are doing, my dear brothers and sisters, is they're trying to get an approval. Who among them is right? Who among them spot the sign? Who among them was able to interpret the actual sign? The message of end times, my dear brothers and sisters, is not to teach us, is not to tell us what exactly will happen, how exactly things will happen. If you understand that, if you grasp the meaning, very good. It is gonna be in your advantage in favor. But the real message and purpose of end times is for us to see the signs so that we will know that it is near. Knowing that it is near encourages us preparation 
Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? The real message of end times is to encourage us. The word of the Lord said, it will come like a thief in the night. When we are talking about end times, it always say, it will come like a thief in the night. It's an expression that the Bible uses. What does it mean? It is going to be sudden. It is going to be unexpected. It is going to be a surprise. Amen, church. If there is a thief coming to your house, is he going to do it in your very eyes? The thief will make sure na malingat ka. So that it will come like a thief in the night. Sudden, unexpected. It's going to be a surprise, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen, church. In that case, what are we going to do? Constant readiness. Amen. Amen, church. You have a bunch of uh, you have a bunch of diamond gold resources in there, and you don't have anywhere to hide it. And the night is falling. You don't sleep. You stand next to it. Amen, church. Because you know that the moment you sleep, the moment you turn your back, someone will come and grab it. The same thing, the same thing with the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. For argument's sake, yeah? For argument's sake, let's say, sabihin natin na, oh, it's not going to happen in our lifetime. It's not going to happen in our lifetime. I'm already 70, 80, 60, 50. It's not going to happen in my lifetime. But still, readiness. Because it says, it's gonna happen like a thief in the night. It's still readiness. People will say, Ay, I'm not going to prepare for the rapture. Because I'm old already. I know that um, I will be dead before then. Exactly. Because you know, when the rapture comes, who will be raptured first? The dead. Yeah? So no one can avoid rapture. People will say, I'm not preparing for the rapture because I'm already old. I'm already old. But if you understand rapture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, those who are dead in Christ will be the first to be raptured. And if you are lucky to be alive, you come next. Amen. So no one can avoid, it's a misconception, no one can avoid rapture. Amen, church. And let's say, sabihin natin, Pastor, you know what? To tell you the truth, I studied the Bible. To tell you the truth, I prayed for it. To tell you the truth, I received a revelation. And I see all the signs. I interpret all the signs. And I can say that end times is not yet coming. I can say that end times is not yet coming. Remember in the time of Jesus, those people, especially the Pharisees, the teacher of the law, people who study the Bible day and night, they study, they interpret who is the Messiah that is coming. And yet, most of all of them did not recognize when Christ turned up. That is the reason why that it says in there that no one knows when the day of the Lord is gonna come. Amen. Exactly a perfect reason for us to prepare. A perfect reason for us to prepare. Amen, church. Why are people not preparing? Why are people not ready? Many people are not preparing. Many people, they do not even know the, uh, an end, the, the end times. Many churches, they avoid the message of the end times. Many people, the message is, oh, you have a problem. God bless you. 
Are you going through something? God bless you. You are much loved. Oh, many people do not believe end times. Many churches, many pulpit do not preach end times. And why? Why is this? Why people are not readying themselves? Are you readying yourself? Why are people not readying yourself? Most people are living their life as if Jesus Christ is not coming soon. Or as if Jesus Christ will not come. That's the reality. Many people are living their lives as if Jesus is not gonna come anytime. The Bible knows that. Let's go back to the passage that we said. 3.3 three. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, is coffers will come. Is coughing and following their own evil desire. Why are people not readying? Why people do not recognize these end times? Why people do not accept, do not believe, they do not live their life as if Christ is not gonna come anytime soon? Why? People are scoffing and mocking this doctrine. Even many churches, I said, are scoffing and mocking this doctrine. And why? Because Peter said, because it does not suit with their evil desire. Amen. It does not suit their evil desire. Man, people are by default evil. Amen. You and me are by default evil. We were only spared when Jesus Christ died for us. It has only had power in our life when we accepted and we surrender our life to the Lord. Amen, church? So why people are not preparing? Why people are not readying themselves? Why people are not living their life as if Jesus Christ is not gonna turn up any moment soon? Because they remain unbeliever. Amen. They remain unbeliever. See, that's the reason why I said, if you look at me, it will be painful. But this is the word of God. That is the reason why Peter said that in the end times, people will mock and scoff this teaching. They do not accept this teaching about this end times because it infringes. In their natural state, in their carnal state, my dear brothers and sisters. People remain unbeliever. Peter, people remain unrepented. People still prefer to enjoy the earthly life. Amen? And these are the people mentioned. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Evildoers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen, church. That's in the Bible. Look at it. Evildoers are not gonna inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 14, a pastor Peter, uh, Peter says that these people will say, where is this end times? Where is this rapture? Where is this Christ coming? As preached to us since I was young. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. Yeah? That's what they said. Hey, many young, young, uh, many young pe uh, old people in our place, they say, and times again, that's already the message when we were young and we are about to die. And what happened? 
People are dying. People are, babies are being born. The world continues. So that's not true. That's what they said. Yeah? But Peter, in the following verse, said, this is illogical thinking. This is illogical thinking because verse 5 to 7, it says in there, they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens come into being and the earth was formed out of the water and by the water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heaven and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Pay attention. What is Apostle Peter is telling us in here? He is addressing these scoffers, these mockers of the doctrine of end times. Peter is trying to address these people that says, oh, the end times was when I was young and up until now. The end times is not gonna come. How many of you in here believe that you exist, that human exists because of an accident? That it's not purposeful that you are here. How many of you in here believe that you are only an outcome of an accident called Big Bang? Do you believe that you are an accident? You are a wonderful creation of God. Amen? Amen. How many of you believe that you are just an evolution from a monkey? <laughs> if that's you, that's you, but we don't want to become your relative. Amen. So if we know that we are not here by accident, if we know that we do not turn up from a monkey through evolution, if we believe that we are purposefully created by God, amen? If you believe that God started your life, it's only logical that God can end it as well. Amen, church? If you are not an accident and you were purposefully created, then it makes sense that God can take you as well. Amen, church? If there is a creation, then it only makes sense that there is an end. Amen, church? So this is what Apostle Peter is saying. Amen? Amen? Not because it has not happened yet, that it is not going to happen. <clears throat> Amen, church? There is a logic there. It does not mean that you bought a new shoes today, that it will always be new. Even if you do not use it, you go back to the store and they say, ah, you bought this three years ago, that is the oldest stock. No one would want to buy that. It does not mean that it has not happened yet, that it's not going to happen. It's very imminent. It is very imminent. It is in the corner. Amen, church. Verse 10. It says in there, The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. All the elements, this building, all the elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything that, will, that is in it will be laid bare. Yun po yung sabi niya dun. Amen, church. Your two hours is winding down. It's already one hour and we are still stuck in here. Mangyayari po mga kapatid. Whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. Amen. So are we the one who are not preparing? Tayo po ba? Do we belong to that people, that group, who does not prepare? Anyone? The question is, how do we prepare? Yeah? Do we know how to prepare? How do we prepare? 
who among us in here wants to hear again? I know we know it already. But how many of us in here wants to know how do we prepare? Because that's the real message of end times. Is how do we prepare? Amen? Gusto po ba nating malaman kung papaano natin ihanda ang ating sarili? Anyone? We believe that the end times will come. We believe that the end times is nigh. How do we prepare? When we believe that Jesus can come anytime, it will lead us to change our perspective, our position, our situation, our condition, our faith, our walk. Amen, church? That is the only response Kung naniniwala tayo, kung hindi tayo naniniwala, we were warned. If you do not believe, you were warned. But if you believe, this message is for you. How are we going to prepare? How do we prepare? It tells us in verse 11. It says in there, Since everything will be destroyed, Say destroyed. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? Amen. How do you prepare? If you believe that the earth will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people you ought to be? Papaano ka maghahanda? How are you going to prepare? And it says in there, you ought to live holy and godly. Tell your neighbor, holy and godly. People online, holy and godly. Amen. Being holy. Amen. Peter is saying that everything will be destroyed. The earth will be burned down and laid bare. And if we believe that Jesus Christ could come back any day, we will live in a different way. And that different way is holy and godly. Amen, church. Amen. Be holy. What does be holy means? Be holy meaning consecrated. Amen, church? Be holy meaning consecrated. Be holy means separated. I beg your pardon, David. Sanctified. Sanctified. Amen. Be holy meaning you need to be consecrated, sanctified, separated. Set apart, in layman's term, different from the world. In layman's term, you are only, ano na yun? Um, reserve for the Lord. Amen, church? If someone is selling longanisa, Oy, can you reserve the five pieces for me? So that means that five longanisa, no one can buy. It's reserved for you. That's the same way with the Lord. When you say being holy, it does not mean you walk with a halo in your head. It means that you are consec everything that you have said. Amen. Amen, church. And that's what Hebrews chapter 12 said. That without Holiness, no one can see the Lord. Amen, church. Holiness, this is where, like, like what we have said last time, you know, these terms, although they are termed nearly synonymously, 
But sometimes, they have an indifference. When you say, you are sanctified, you are hallowed. Amen? Meaning, you are separated, you are sanctified, you are consecrated for the Lord only. Amen, church? Holiness does not mean you are trying your best to live a good life. No. That will be next. We will see it later. Holiness does not mean nagpapakabait ka, you're trying to be a good person. It does not mean that. Holiness does not mean na make sure na hindi ka magkasala. It does not mean that. That's the reason why you only achieve holiness by the blood of Jesus. Amen, church? Without the shedding of the blood, you will not become holy. Amen. We are evil. We are sinful. Amen. Nothing that we can do can change that. That was only changed when we were washed, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Without Jesus shedding His blood, there is no hope for us. Amen, church. So the moment that we accepted the Lord Jesus, that's the reason why that accepting the Lord Jesus is called a decision. Amen. Decision meaning you are Christian now, not tomorrow. No. When Sister Michelle decided to say yes to Brother Ramon, she knows, he knows that that is for long term. Amen. Amen, church. That's why it's decision. That's why the Lord said that if you are indecisive, yeah, if you are indecisive, the Lord said like a wave that is being tossed here and there, you will not receive anything. You will not see the kingdom of God. That's why it's called decision. Because once you decided, this is it. That's why the Lord said, count the cost. Coming to the Lord, surrendering to the Lord should not just be as an act of emotion. Because if the purpose, the reason of your emotion is gone, your faith is gone as well. That's why it's a decision. Amen. And that's what holiness means. Once you decided to say yes to the Lord, you are already separated for the Lord. Amen, church. You are already consecrated in the Lord. That's where it says that you run that race with perseverance. The Lord put you in that race. Continue in that race. Do not think that I, I'm better in basketball. I'll go there. No, the Lord said, you are in that race. Continue in that race with perseverance. Amen, church. No man can serve two masters, Matthew chapter 6. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money, mammon, the world. Amen, church. Amen. That's what holiness means. You have said yes to the Lord. You have Put your affirmation and decision to the Lord. No pulling out. No turning back. Amen, church. You enlisted yourself that Lord, saying yes to the Lord, saying that Lord, I'll gonna serve you. Whether circumstance, situation change. Amen. Again, that's why I said, if you are going to listen to here, uh, looking at my life, looking, you will be frustrated. But this is the word of the Lord. Amen, church. Amen. Holiness means hindi na tayo dapat chismosa, chism, or gossip. Diba? And no, that's the reality, my dear brothers and sisters. I myself, hindi ako magpapakalinis dito. When we are sanctified, consecrated, do you believe that you are sanctified? Amen. Do you believe that you are consecrated? Amen, church. And do you believe that yung mga chismis na yan ay galing sa Panginoon? 
Gossiping does that come from the Lord? No. So that's the reason why uh, we should not be a gossiper anymore. Wag na tayong chismosa. Oy, pastor naman, you are a sexist. O di, wag na rin tayong chismoso. Di ba? Para parehas. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. <coughs> wag na tayong palamura. Amen. Cursing. In this, in the workplace, <laughs> in the workplace, there is no, no day that you will not hear cursing in the workplace. To them, it becomes, oh no, this is just a expression. But still, you are sanctified, you are hallowed. Amen, church. Immorality. Living in immorality. Living in vices. Diba? Drugs, drinking, smoking. Wag na tayong sinungaling. Sometimes, white lies, we call it. But it is a lie. Amen, church. Be holy. Separated. Amen, church. What is the next? Wake us up. Because we know that this world will be burned, we ought to live holy and godly. Godly or righteously. This is what it says, my dear brothers and sisters. Na ito yung kaya natin, we have the control. Ito yung, we try to work our faith, we try to walk in our faith with uh, fear and trembling. Amen. If we say that we are walking in a godly life, we're walking in a righteous life, ito po yung meron tayong influence. This is where we say that, yeah, there are um, uh, uh, may mga tukso, there are um, tukso in English? There are temptations all over, but we close our eyes, we continue to walk. Amen, church? So we need to live a holy and godly life. Godly life, my dear brothers and sisters, meaning righteous living. Living righteously. Amen. No one is righteous. No, not one. No, not a single one of us. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, day by day. Amen. That's the reason why that we have to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul said, Amen, church. You are not walking on your own. You are walking with the Holy Spirit. So don't think that there is no help, there is no aid. The Holy Spirit is there. Still a small voice talking to you, counseling you, teaching you, leading you. These are all the names of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church? Yes, it may be your brother, it may be your sister there, but it's the act of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope that they're telling the right and hindi chismis yung pinag-uusapan nyo. Amen, church. Living godly means we need to be passionate about our spiritual life. Amen, church. It is not enough for us to simply have a spiritual life. We must be passionate in that spiritual life. Amen, church? Amen. Hindi po kasha na sabihin natin na meron tayong pananampalataya na kristyano ako. No. We need to have a passionate spiritual life. When we say passionate spiritual life, what does it mean? In Taglish, in layman's term, we must be hot na hot. Amen, church? We must be committed. Amen, church. Passionate meaning our spiritual life is intense, zealous, devoted. Amen, church. Amen. Again, this is just a question. Yung mga pahuli-huli dito, mga palate-late dito, is that a passionate spiritual life? <laughs> That's the message. We are waking up. Amen. 
Uh, we we uh, uh, paliban, we absent in uh, the gathering. Is that a passionate spiritual life? We are not available on uh, uh, meetings and practices. Is that passionate spiritual life? This is the message of the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. This is not the message of uh, pastor. This is the message of the Lord. Living godly. Amen, church. Hallelujah. It says in there, no? Everything is permissible. Amen? But not everything is beneficial. Do you believe in that, my dear brothers and sisters? You know, if we talk you and me, if we talk you and me or if you talk with people next to you, if we talk, my dear brothers and sisters, everything will be reasonable not to come to church. Everything will be reasonable not to come to church. Everything will be reasonable for us to do what we are doing. In any mornings, I'm sure you do too, in any mornings, I can call my boss and say, Boss, I cannot come to work today because I am not feeling well. I have a back pain. I cannot come to work today because of my wife, because of my children. I cannot come to work today because I have a family matter. I cannot come to work today because I am busy. Yeah? I cannot come to, to work today because, you know, someone booked me a ticket to London and like this and like that. And the boss will say, but you always find a way. And that's acceptable for my boss. Amen. And like I say, if you and me will talk, everything will be reasonable not to come to church. What are our reasons not coming to church? I'm tired. I am working. I am from night. I am going to work tonight. I am not feeling well. We have a holiday book. We have a trip. But, and you laugh, but those are reasonable. Yeah? In our mind, those are reasonable, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't get me wrong. This is the truth. And suddenly, we all fail in this truth. I am laughing because hindi lang kayo, not only you, me as well. Amen. And that's the truth. We all fail in this truth, my dear brothers and sisters. But the question is, we need to bring this out to the open because if we know that end times is near, we need to change the way we are living. Amen, church. That is your boss. But if you stand in front of the Lord, if you stand in front of the Lord, and the Lord will ask you, Anak, my son, my daughter, why did you not persevere? And you say, God, because I am not feeling well, because I am tired, God, because I am working, God, because of my family, there is no good enough reason. That's why in the Revelation said that Christians, believers, I'm not sure where in Revelation, but search it, it's in Revelation. It says in there that you and me, Christians, Christians, meaning those saved, will help judge the nation. Katulong kayo ng Panginoon to judge the nation. You will help the Lord judge the nation. How? I do believe that it's like this. Someone will come and say that, Lord, dispensa because I was not well. Dispensa because my family dispensa because of work. You know, the Lord will say, can you please bra call brother like this and like that? And he, he will stand in front of you and say that this man, this woman has even a worse situation than you. 
and he and she persevere. In this world, you and me, everything is reasonable. But in the face of God, there is no reason that will suffice. I am the way, the truth, and the life, the say it, God. No one can come to the Father except through Him. Not through our reasons. This is the truth. And as I gaze to each and every one of you, I fail in this category as well. This is the message of end times. How can we prepare? How can we change the way we live, mga kapatid? Amen, church. This is not about see you anymore. This is not about Christ is our rock church anymore, my dear brothers and sisters. This is not about church anymore, my dear brothers and sisters. This is a matter of your eternity. This is a matter of your final destination, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. This is not about you or this is about you. This is about us. This is our spiritual walk with the Lord. Amen, church. Amen. If you are far away, if you are bra on break, if you are on holiday, kung nasa bakasyon ka, if it's far, Mahirap, it's difficult to come to church. It's difficult to step in these very doors. Mahirap pumasok sa church. My dear brothers and sisters, we are blessed in here in the UK that every local communities have a body of Christ represented. Amen, church. If we are like in Africa, People walk for hours to get to the church without footwear. They are living godly. They are living a holy life. And they can do it. Why can we not come? The church is only few streets from our house. From our road. My dear brothers and sisters, if you are really convinced that end times is here, if you are really convinced that Jesus is turning soon. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to change in the way of our life. Amen, church. Your soul is too precious for us to ignore these needs. Amen. No one, no one, no one, my dear brothers and sisters, can save us except the Lord. Not even the pastor, not even the pastor's wife, not even the church can save us. Not even Seor can save you, my dear brothers and sisters. So therefore, no one is good enough to dampen your faith. Amen. No one is good enough to dampen your faith. Continue in the Lord. Continue in the Lord. Magpatuloy tayo. Amen, church. No one can dampen your faith. Oh, the service in Seor is afternoon. And I'm already asleep then. I was coming, I'm coming from night. Tell you, St. Michael has a service here, 10 o'clock. Why don't you come here at 10 o'clock? Or what time is the service in uh, where you're going, Tish, in the morning? Um, uh, oh, is it New Testament or RCGG you're going? I'm confused. <laughs> so what time do you go? They service in there in the morning. Yeah. Night people. But sometimes if you're coming from night, it's very difficult to sleep and wake up from 1.30. Again, it's not about you. It's about your spiritual life. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Halleluja. The simple, i-simplify natin ang mensahe. The message in here is, I know that, yeah, I know that, i-simplify natin. I-simplify natin the message of the Lord. The simple message of the Lord here is, let us prioritize the Lord. Let us prioritize the Lord. Unahin natin ang Panginoon. Amen, church. Let us prioritize the Lord. Let us prioritize. Unahin natin ang Panginoon. Amen. Everything is permissible according to Paul to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, if I'm not mistaken. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Let us prioritize the Lord. Lord, I believe in end times. Lord, I believe that you are coming near. Lord, I believe in you. Teach me how to prepare. Teach me how to prepare. Amen, church. The earth will burn. The earth will burn. That's why we ought to live a holy and godly life. Ibig sabihin, all the material and temporary things are going to waste. They do not matter. The earth will burn. Amen, church. If the earth is going to be destroyed, why are we so obsessed with everything that is in this world? Why are we obsessed in everything that is temporary? Our cars, congratulations. Our houses, congratulations. Our accomplishments, congratulations. Our job, congratulations. Our diploma, congratulations. All your accumulations, congratulations. But my dear brothers and sisters, you cannot bring them. You cannot bring them with you. Let us prioritize the Lord. Amen, church. The end times is here. The Lord is coming any moment soon. Amen. How are we going to prepare? First Timothy 4, 7, 8. Sabi niya rito, Have nothing to do with irreverent old wives' fables. What is that meaning in English, this old wives' fables? Because in Tagalog, we have our own version of old wives' fable. Anyone knew what is old wives' fable in Tagalog? Kwentong barbero. Eh? Yeah, I think like chit-chats or something that, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, have nothing to do with irreverence, old wife fables. Rather, train yourself to godliness. Amen. This is the word of God. If I am talking to you, if I am telling you this, without referring to the Bible, you will be hurt. Because the truth hurts. But salamat sa Panginoon because these are not my own words. These are the word of the Lord. Amen, church. Physical training is of some value in verse 8, but godliness has value for all things. Holding promise for both the present life, but most importantly, the eternal life to come. Amen, church. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. What is the Lord says in Romans chapter 12, if we remember it? We are being encouraged, brethren, to offer our lives as a holy offering, as a holy sacrifice to the Lord. Amen, church. This is the reasonable act of our worship to the Lord. Amen. That is the only reasonable act of worship to the Lord. Amen. If we feel this message is anyone in here, 
who they think that, oh, they are already doing the right thing. Anyone in here that says that, oh, I'm already living not only a holy but also a godly life. I am avoiding all those things. Anyone? Good for you. Good for you. I truly mean it. But the message of the Lord in here is, if we feel, if we think that we are doing everything already, if we think that we are in the right standing, Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4.1, Brothers and sisters, as we instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact, you are already living. Amen. You are already living the example. You are already living the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But Apostle Paul said is, Now we ask and urge you in the name of the Lord to do this more and more. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. To those who are not yet there, we need to prepare. To those who are already there, Apostle Paul said, do it more and more in an increasing way from glory to glory. Amen, church. Amen. Let us continue to dig deeper. Mas lalo pa tayong lumalim, lumago, mag-ugat. Dig deeper. Let us uh, root deeper. Now we were talking about Psalms chapter 1. What is that Psalms chapter 1? What is that structure in there? The tree that is planted by the stream of water. Amen, church. This end times, let us desire to be the tree planted by the stream of water. That whatever signs, tribulations will come, the tree stands firm. Amen, church. The tree continues to draw from that river of water. What is that river of water that we receive when we accepted Christ? The Holy Spirit. Amen. None of this everything that we talk about matter if we try to do it without the Holy Spirit. We will fail. We will fail. That's why our response be is to yield to the Holy Spirit and not the other way around. Amen, church. And finally, the Lord's personal message to us all. Do not forget this one thing. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise. As some of us understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Amen, church. To be honest, who among us in here finds that message not helpful? Not useful. Who among us in here say that ang haba naman ng mensahe na yan? Nakakaboring. Nakakapagod. My dear brothers and sisters, tell the brother next to you, the sister next to you, people online, I'm telling you, the reason that God did not came yesterday because of you. Amen. You are the reason why Jesus did not came yesterday, why Jesus did not came last week, why Jesus did not came last month, why Jesus did not came last year. You are the reason. Because had the reason came, we probably have perished. The fact that the Lord is prolonging it is to allow us time and chance to have a change of heart. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us all stand up, please. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, uh, it is our prayer. It is our prayer, Father God, that you empower your very words, Father, so that I pray 
that it is not just a clanging symbol, that it is not just a mere gong, Father God. Lord, it was an unadulterated, a hardcore word. It was a meat to our soul. It was a hammer and mallet, Father God, crushing us to the bones. It was a fire, Father, burning us to even na napapasok kami, Father God. But thank you, Lord, because your word says that that is the work of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will rebuke us with sin, with righteousness, and with judgment. Kaya maraming maraming salamat, Father God. Can we please invite uh, our element um, Asher, Asheretz? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray for our brethren. Lord, thank you for the life of our dear brother Taman and for the life of our dear sister Teresa, O oh God. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, for calling them to be the servant, Father God, to be the ushers, O oh God, of this element this afternoon. Lord, our prayer is that you cleanse their hand, that you give them, Father God, a clean heart, a pure heart and spirit, Lord, that you may use them freely this afternoon. Cause it, Lord, that as they hand this element to your people, it's as if we are receiving them directly from the hand of your Son, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this element, this bread that symbolizes your body, and this cup, this drink that symbolizes your blood, O oh Jesus. Lord, it is our prayer that you cleanse them you bless them in their raw form, O God. That, Lord, as we receive and as we partake of it this afternoon, Lord, may they serve to us in memory, Father, of what you have completed and achieved in that cross. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. The advice of the Lord is, we ought to examine ourselves before we eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without examining ourselves will be guilty and they will eat and drink judgment for themselves. As the element is being handed over, let's talk to the Lord. Let the music play by Gabe minister to our soul, to our heart, to our spirit. Let it drive through that message of the end times that we have heard from the Lord this afternoon. My dear brothers and sisters, discounting who is talking, disregarding itong taong nakatayo sa harap na nagsasalita. We did not say any word, Father, that cannot be referenced to the word of the Lord. I am just a mere messenger do not shoot the messenger. It will be unfair for me and for the Holy Spirit that is in me. And it will be unfair to you and the Holy Spirit that is in you. If you hate, kung magalit ka sa tao na nagbabasa lamang na sinasabi lamang kung ano ang nakasulat sa salita ng Panginoon. You are better than that. 
the Lord has called us to be better than that. Lord, we humble ourselves. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your cleansing. Reconcile us with the blood of your Son, Jesus, with your Holy Spirit, that we will be one in you, that we will be united in you, O Holy Spirit, as the Lord sent you to be our comforter, our counselor, the voice, the lead. Father, search our very heart, our very mind, and our innermost being. If anything, Lord, that is embedded in there that can disqualify us in partaking of your communion. Father, we desire, we allow, we agree with you. Take it away, O God. Cleanse us once more and deliver us. We have no other desire as we stand in your holy presence. But in the midst of your assembly, next to our brothers and sisters that we may be able to proclaim celebrate and remember not only your death not only your suffering but most importantly your victory your raising up from the dead your raising up from the dead O oh God because just as your word says to everyone who trusts in your name O oh Jesus to everyone who put their faith and confidence in you, Jesus. To everyone who put their life in you, Jesus. Dying, we died for you. Raising up, we rose for you. We rose with you. And thank you very much, Lord. Though we are not good enough, you have made us seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you, the Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, all of you. This is my body. Do this in memory of me. Let us eat the bread. Let us raise the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took a cup saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this in memory of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Let us drink the cup. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God, let's talk to the Lord. In memory of His suffering, His crucifixion, his death, His raising from the dead is the summary of our redemption so that we can stand today with joy and gladness that we are redeemed. Amen, church. My dear brothers and sisters, take this moment to talk with the Lord. Talk this moment to open your heart, to open your mind to the Lord. Do you believe that the Lord is all-powerful, that the Lord is all-knowing? There is nothing impossible to Him. So talk to the Lord right now, each and every one of us, and tell the Lord, 
the content of your very heart. Cry to the Lord. Magsumbong kayo sa Panginoon. Talk to the Lord. You know, in this world, everything is represented in illness. Illness of the body, illness of the soul, and illness of the spirit. Why don't you come to the Lord? Why don't you come Jehovah Rapha? The one whom can heal your body. The one whom can heal your soul. The one whom can heal your spirit. Talk to the Lord. Simple phrase. Coming from your very heart. The Lord knows. The Lord understand. Lord, pardon me. Although I fully believe and I am fully convinced that end times is here. That I ought to live my life differently. But Father, pardon me. Because of this innumerable in my eyes are reasonable reasons. I am the Spirit with the help of your Holy Spirit. I am the Spirit with the help of your Holy Spirit. Worries about this life. Worries about finances, my mortgage, my car payments. Worries about every payment. That's why I have to take overtime. That's why I have to do this, this, and that, Lord. Worries at work. That's why I cannot say no. Worries about anything and everything, Lord. This is the moment when we say, Lord, help us to trust fully in you. Help us to trust fully in you, O God. Help us to let go in all our business, trying to make ends meet in just in trust in surrender everything to you, Lord. And just to say that, Lord, I yield. Now it's your turn. Now it's your chance. Now it is your time, O God to work things out for me. I recognize that I need to move. I recognize that I need to do something. But reveal it to me. Tell it to me. Teach me it, O God. And my dear brothers and sisters, if you really want to know the answer, if you really want to find the answer, I cannot tell you. I know where to find it. But I cannot tell you the answer. I know where to find it. You can find it in the word of the Lord. You can find it in the Lord. And He is waiting for you to talk to Him. He is waiting for you to come to Him. He is waiting for you to open those Bibles and let those Bibles speak to you. If you are ashamed, if you are afraid, the Lord is even telling you, my son, my daughter, what you celebrated, the communion, this is what I have done for you. Now take solace in confidence that you can come and stand boldly in my presence. All you have to do is take those first steps. All you need to do is to make those decisions. Can I invite if someone in here being led by the Holy Spirit, if you want to pray with us, 
you are invited. But again, considering the cost, it's a decision that we have to take. It's a decision in this place, right here, right now. Thank you, Father God. Lord, complete your message to your people. I pray that the co complete revelation of the Holy Spirit be upon them. I pray, O Lord, that you talk to them personally. I pray, O Lord, that you wake them up in their sleep. I pray, O Lord, that you remind them at work. I pray, O Lord, that they can vividly see you in their waking up. I pray, O Lord, that you will show them signs, wonders, visions, and dreams, O God. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon your people, O God. Nothing is hidden from you. Lord, teach us. Help us on any area, in every area, Father God, that we ought to excel unto, that we ought to change, that we ought to turn over, O God. And Father, I pray for the life of your people that may you continue to inspire their heart. Holy Spirit, continue to lighten their heart to passion, Father God, to commitment, Lord. Thank you very much, Father God. We continue to honor you. We continue to desire you, Father. And we continue, Father, to want to walk with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As we remain standing, can we invite a special someone this afternoon? Someone who 17 years ago have experienced the grace of the Lord so that she can continue to stand and worship and praise with us until this very moment. So that we will have the honor and privilege to meet. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, this is Sister Mers. Sister Mers has a, uh, uh, oh sorry, has a uh, kidney replacement surgery 17 years ago. And as you can see, continuing to remain pretty and bubbly for the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Baka mayroon kang, maybe you want to say something, oh, Sister Mers, on top of yung sinabi mo kanina? Yes, another year. That's from God. He, he blessed me very, very much. He take care of me, and he protect me. So, thank you enough for him. It's not enough to say thank you to the Lord. I offer myself to to him because he is very, very good to me and my family. Seventeen years up and down, but still I'm here to. To see a testimony, just a trust in the Lord, and He will give everything. So thank you, thank you very much, and to my husband that he is understand me. Thank you, and thank you to see your family and to our pastor. Thank you very much. Glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. Um, Luz, yeah, Luz, the sister, the sister who is a donor. So let us pray for our sister Merce and to her sister Luz, who was the donor of the kidney. Amen. And uh, we thank the Lord that they will continue to enjoy life abundantly and fully. Amen. Let us pray. Extend po natin ang ating kamay sa ating kapatid na sister Merce. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of life, Father God.
We thank you that you are the God, that you are the Lord who gave us life spiritually, physically, Father God. And we thank you so much, Father, because you are the author of life. And you are the author of second chances to life. And Lord, we acknowledge your goodness. We acknowledge your power, your grace, and your mercy upon the life of our dear sister Merce, who, because of you, 17 years ago, had the kidney transplant, Father God. And all these years, Lord, we thank you that he, she remains fit, she remains healthy, she remains well, but most importantly, Lord, she is not a burden to anyone, Father God. Not to the family, not to the system, not to the government, not to anyone. And that is because of you, Father God. And even we thank you that you continue to use her, Father God, to extend a nuggets of encouragement, not only to the young people, but to the members of the church. Father, we acknowledge your goodness as well to the life of her sister Luz, the donor of that kidney. We thank you so much because that is purely an act of love. And we thank you so much that that love is substantiated by you, O oh God. So Lord, we continue to entrust and lift up the life of these sisters unto you. Sister Merce and Sister Luz, Father, that our prayer, O oh God, as we joyfully and, uh, awaits your end times, that may the remaining days and times, Father, that may you satisfy them with life in prosperity, in spirit, body, and soul. May you continue to substantiate their strength, their health, their well-being, and may you continue to nurture them to grow, to continue the ministry, the service that you have called them for to do. Thank you so much, O God. Thank you so much, O Jesus. Thank you so much, O Holy Spirit. This is you, and this is about you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, um, I encourage you to go home, read uh, Matthew chapter 24, read Matthew chapter 25. Why don't you take the moment to have a Bible study with your significant people around you? Husband, wife, parents, your siblings. Talk about end times. Talk about end times. And my dear brothers and sisters, if you are confused, hindi nyo alam, naguguluhan kayo about end times, it is not a right way to just simply shoot it down or not just simply do not care. My advice is, ask someone. Call someone. Speak with someone. Amen, church? And yes, um, we are invited. We have a small, simple refreshment in there as a thanksgiving. Um, uh, let's lower our expectation from our usual food gathering. But kung ano yung nandyan, let's partake of it. While uh, uh, siguro if it's okay, if Sister Annie is not rushing, I would like, uh, let's invite Sister Annie to um, uh, later on in our fellowship to give a testimony.